Hey guys, before we start this video, make sure you guys follow me over on Twitch where I stream all my game creations live. This video is going to be handled just a little bit differently from my other Game Builder Garage videos, and instead of showcasing a level that I've made, I'm going to showcase something that I learned to do. And this video is a little bit less scripted. My I usually write out a small script for my intros, but I'm going to just be coming up with stuff to say on the fly as opposed to just reading what I wrote. So, as of recording, I'm currently in the process of building an escape room. And something in my escape room that I learned to do was how to make a combination lock. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do it today. So I already went ahead and got some stuff set up. Basically, all I have set up is, you know, just a person, whose actions is punch, solid, visible, you know, normal stuff for a person. I have my button set to Y, um, which that will come into play and be important as we go through this tutorial. If you guys choose to have your punch or whatever action that you want to set off your counter um, as a different button, then change every time I say Y to whatever button you want. And I just have a standard camera everything about these guys is normal so basically when you start up you can put these anywhere I put them on a box to act as a wall my cylinder will be set as the object I'm going to be interacting with to make the number count up I only have it set as visible you don't need it to be solid or anything else color whatever you want you know all that's personal preference and then a number counter directly above it on the X plane. On the Y plane, they should be stacked directly on top of each other. And just a little bit overhanging off so it isn't completely overshadowed by the wall. So to start things off, we're gonna want touch sensors in front of each of the cylinders. Make them, make them about, you know, where your person would stand as they were punching. You want it to not be visible and while touched, and you only want it to check for your person. So you want to copy each one over. Um, this tutorial can also be used for more than four numbers or less than four numbers. Four is just the number that I'm going with currently. So if you had a six digit combination lock or seven digit combination lock, Instead of having a four touch sensors, four cylinders, four number counters, you would have five, six, seven, and that can be applied to anything that I'm going to be saying in this tutorial. So under the touch person sensor, you want to have your Y button, or again, whatever button you have set to your action. So if you're using the X button, you're going to want four or however many buttons that you're going to be using to activate your combination lock. Doesn't have to be the neatest thing, I'm just saying that so that way I feel better about how I'm placing my new locks. After that, you wanna go into middle, logic, and you need and. So when your person is in the touch sensor and you press Y, it's going to have an output. So we need four ands for my example and you want to go ahead and connect up each one the way I'm doing this so touch sensor goes into the first input and your button goes into your second input and this can be carried over to however many numbers you have in your combination so next up Really quick before we get any further, for your number counters, um, you want only one whole digit. You can make it two, you can make it, you know, three, four, five if you want to, but that's just gonna overly complicate things. It's a lot easier if you only just do one. And then, so if your number would be like 1024, then just make it 1024. Anyway, next we're going to need or counters but let's get the settings right for this first one so your starting value will obviously be zero 
you want it on a loop, you want it on change from zero, and since you are only using one digit when you're counter, you're gonna just go from zero to 10. So when it hits nine, it bounces back down to zero. Is it a bounce? No, it's a loop. It loops back to zero. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to confuse anybody with my wording. So that's good, we can now copy this. You can also use a bounce, but instead of resetting after 9 and having the number go back to 0, it'll just go back down to 8 instead of fully resetting. And you're going to feed your and into the count up. You want to feed... Now your count up is going to feed into multiple different notes. So I'm going to take it step by step here. The easiest one because I did mess up on this in, when I was building it myself. Feed your counter into your numbers, your number display. So that way, when you punch, it'll count. So I'm gonna show what it looks like right now. So as I punch here, it's gonna one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Yeah. So it will display the number. So now that we have that done, we want to make it into our combination and have our have only a specific set of numbers unlock what we want it to unlock. Whether that be a door, or you want something to teleport into the room with you, whatever you want it to do. So we're going to need to call up some comparisons and we need four equals. And then we feed our counter into input one on each of the equals. And then we're gonna need four constants underneath of the equals. These constants will be your code. So my four constants left to right will be my code. I haven't decided on a code yet, but we're just gonna make it something super simple, but not too easy to guess. So how about something like one, two, eight, and nine. Now for your constants, you don't want them to be a half number such as three and a half, 3.25, 5.75, 9.6. You need it to be a whole number in between zero to nine. It cannot be a negative number. It cannot be over 10. Maybe if you code this differently than me, you can figure out a way to do it, such as having the counter count down instead of counting up, or if you want double digit numbers on your number displays, then you can find out a way to do it. So this is going to be our code. It's going to be one, two, eight, nine. We only want this combination lock to do its thing when we have punched in the numbers one, two, eight, nine. So we wanna feed our constants into input two of our equals node on. Next, we wanna call up some comparisons and you're gonna need eight of these. So I, you need four less thans and you need four greater thans. So if you have six digit combination lock, you're gonna need six less thans, six greater thans. Basically, whatever number your combo lock is, for mine it's four, you're gonna need eight total less than and greater thans. What I like to do to make it a little bit easier on myself is line them up like this, greater than, less than, greater than, less than. Okay. Now, you want your constant, no. I'm sorry. You wanna plug your counter into input one of each one. So your first counter will go into your first input 
one less than and greater than. Your second will go into your third, input one, and your fourth, input one, so on and so forth. I'm not explaining it as well as I could, but you can visually see on the screen what I'm doing. Each count will go into one of each of the greater than. It's probably a little bit easier to tell when I see. Anyway, after that, you need four flags. Two, three, four. So let's go ahead and place down our flags. Perfect. A step I should have covered really quick already, but I did not. You want your constants to plug into the second input of each of your less than and greater thans. So constant one will plug into input two of each of these. Constant two will plug into input two of your second set. Constant three will plug into input two of your third set. And constant four will plug into your input two in your fourth set. All right. Now, you wanna connect your equals output to turn on the flag. So one, two, three, four. Now each set of your less than and greater thans, you want them to turn off your first flag or your first set. The second set, you want them to turn off the flag, the second flag. Your third set, you want them to turn off your third flag. And your fourth set, you want them to turn off your fourth flag. So therefore, the coding we have right now is if the first number equals one, it will turn on the flag. However, if the number is less than or greater than one, it will turn off the flag. We're almost done. Next, this is the one that can mess you, well not mess you up, it can very it can be diverse not enough i'm sorry you need and so basically if you have four flags you need three ants you basically need to feed all of these down into one ant so flag one we can turn to input one of the first and flag two we can put in input two of the first and and vice versa flag three input one of the second and and flag four input two of the set of the second and and then we feed the output of the end into another and and you basically want to have this chain going down until you can condense it all into one and because when all of this is done this is the one output that's going to matter so let's say we have a sound effect play when you guess your correct combination. We'll make it super happy because it's going to be an awesome thing. And you know, we found something awesome. So let's just teleport in a treasure chest, you know? They could really make this a lot more user friendly. Make it like alphabetical order or something, you know? Put it right there. This is all stuff you don't need to do. I'm just doing it to showcase an example. It's probably something I should have had set up beforehand. But I'm also showing what all your combination lock can do when you have your final number put in. Let's have an effect. An effect would be awesome. I can never remember where they are. Let's have a smoke effect right there. And we can have 
some party poppers go off. And you find it out. Now your best way for a combination lock to be useful is if you do somehow have the numbers in your world. So that way people aren't just hopelessly punching and guessing to what the number is going to be. Connect your final end to whatever you want it to connect to. So any special effects, any sound effects, any teleportations, any walls you want to teleport away, anything like that. My code. One, two, eight, nine is our code. So I'm gonna show you right now. If we go past the one, if we go past the two, if we go past the eight, nothing happens because the flags recognize that the number input is greater or less than than the one, two, eight, nine. So we have one, we have two, we have eight, and nine. My teleporter didn't work, but that's because I forgot to move in a treasure chest. But you guys get the point of it. There is my four digit combination lock. Again, it can be applied to be any number you need. If you only need three, get rid of all of these and you can just have your flag feed into one and and have these two flags into the end. Uh, you can extend it all the way down to however many you need, up to 10, 20, however many your node on count will allow you to have. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I do hope that you are able to use this in your worlds and have fun coding. Good night.